Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Google Founder offers new ultralight vehicle. Mooney loses CEO. Gamma hosts Part 23 training sessions. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's April 26, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A major player in the online world, Google's Larry Page has entered the aviation arena with a personal flying machine that is supposed to operate in the ultralight category. Called the Kitty Hawk Flyer, the new ultralight air vehicle is a new all-electric aircraft. Page's effort claims the aircraft to be safe, tested, and legal to operate in the United States in uncongested areas under the ultralight category of FAA regulations. We've designed our first version specifically to fly over water. You don't need a pilot's license and you'll learn to fly it in minutes. We publicly revealed the working prototype in April 2017. The official flyer will be available by the end of the year. While video and photos of the vehicle reveal a multi-copter-like configuration, the final configuration is promised to be significantly different than seen in the public unveiling of the flying prototype. While many media pundits are claiming that this is the next iteration of flying car to hit the market, the Kitty Hawk Flyer is meant to be operated over fresh water and may be flown in uncongested areas of the U.S., which will certainly limit the utility of this version of the vehicle, though the mission statement suggests that this may be the first of a generation of airborne transports. The company claims it will have vehicles ready by the end of the year. After less than a year at the helm of Mooney Aircraft, Vivek Saxena has apparently resigned his post. Employees at the company's Kerrville, Texas and Chino, California operations were reportedly notified by email that Mooney and Saxena had decided to part ways. Albert Lee will assume the post of executive director while a search is conducted for a new CEO. Mooney officials have been reticent to describe much of what happened and have declined to go into any substantive detail. Still, a Mooney rep confirmed that the company is proceeding without interruption on M20 production and have even reported that M10 development is ongoing via several media reports. However, Saxena told ANN at Sun and Fun that the production of the M10 was on indefinite hiatus, but that the technology developed for the aircraft will be used for other future projects. Mooney is owned by the Meijing Group, a Chinese corporation which infused millions of dollars into Mooney, breathing new life into the company after it had stopped production for several years. The M20 Ultraline recently received certification from the FAA. After the break, Gamma hosts Part 23 training sessions. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA drone report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero news.net. Gamma has hosted the first in a series of training sessions about the U.S. government's Part 23 rule rewrite at the Boeing facility in Seattle, Washington. In December 2016, the FAA announced sweeping changes to the rules, which takes effect in August. The new rules for the design of small airplanes apply to aircraft that weigh less than 19,000 pounds, with 19 or fewer seats. Gamma is hosting the training sessions at locations throughout the U.S. to offer interested aviation community members an opportunity to learn about the new design environment of the rules. The new rules will allow manufacturers and suppliers of products and technologies for small airplanes to develop and deliver innovative products to their customers more quickly and better leverage new technologies. To ensure an industry-wide understanding of the changes, 
Gamma is leveraging its sessions, the same FAA materials, and the same FAA training experts that are being provided to the FAA workforce. Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce said, quote, Gamma is proud to continue championing this industry-changing rule through our training sessions. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Well, North Dakota uh, for a long time, well before the test site program uh, was uh, uh, conceived and implemented by the FAA, uh, has been uh, involved in unmanned aircraft systems. Very specifically, did. while at the Unmanned Systems 2015 conference, ANN CEO and editor in chief Jim Campbell spent a lot of time looking at UAS aerial vehicles and talking with manufacturers that produce them. However, there's more to it than producing the hardware. There's also a need to promote the locations where research can take place. And that's exactly what the state of North Dakota is doing. Search Aero TV North Dakota leads the way, a focal point for UAV innovation on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, turbulence injuries on the increase. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has released a report indicating that the number of injuries attributable to turbulence experienced airliners doubled from 2015 to 2016. According to statistics posted on the FAA website, there were 21 total turbulence-related injuries in 2015. That number climbed to 44 in 2016. Late last Tuesday, the crew of an Air Canada Jazz Q400 airliner on approach to landing at Ottawa International Airport said they saw a drone at about 1,500 feet. The crew says the drone narrowly missed, colliding with the left wing of the larger aircraft. While the incident has not been confirmed, that hasn't kept several pundits and know-it-alls from sounding the alarm. Voyager Aviation Corporation has rolled out the first-of-its-kind Dash 8100 package freighter conversion aircraft. With the first two of its Dash 8100 PF conversions being delivered to Wasaya Airways of Thunder Bay, Ontario. London Oxford Airport finished 2016 as the sixth busiest London airport for business and general aviation, ahead of the London City Airport, and entered 2017 as the 16th busiest in Europe, in front of London Stansted and Northalt. Overall, London Oxford's jet movements were up 6.4% for 2016 with the airport handling a total of 5,629 business aviation movements. St. Petersburg College in Florida is offering two classes to prepare potential drone operators for careers. On April 29th, the college is offering a one-day class titled Drones Unmanned Systems Overview. The class will present an overview of the emerging uses of UAS, the need for safety and awareness of FAA regulations in regards to use of UAS commercially. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The 43rd Annual Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo took place April 4 through 9, 2017 in Lakeland, Florida. Organizers say the event was the best fly-in Sun and Fun has ever had. According to the official stats, the event drew about 200,000 guests from over 60 countries. Other than the U.S. citizens, Brazil, Canada, and United Kingdom once again had the highest amount of visitors. Other numbers include more than 3,000 volunteers helped during the six-day event. 
38 student tours were conducted with 969 students. Approximately 400 people attended educational workshops. 500 students attended the Blue Angel Symposium. 10,000 visitors toured the Piedmont Aerospace Experience. 130 career-minded individuals from 48 states and 3 countries attended the annual career fair. 500 people participated in the inaugural Drone Zone. 443 media representatives attended from 16 countries. 5,988 people attended 331 forums. 3,228 people attended 56 workshops. Over 9,000 aircraft movements took place and 510 exhibitors participated in the event. The event is planned for April 4th and 9th again in 2018. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.